So how do you get your players to leave Dungeons and Dragons and try something new? Stick around to the end to get the best way to make your players comfortable with trying out a new system. Or, you know, their timestamps below, their chapters, you can just skip ahead to that. So my players have been playing D&D from level 1 to 20 for quite a while, but during that time, I really wanted to get out of it. I wanted to be playing something that wasn't fantasy. So every Halloween, I would ask, hey, can we run a one-shot in another system? In this case, for Halloween, I would run Call of Cthulhu because it does horror a lot better than D&D can since D&D is heroic fantasy. Now, there are people who will say, but I can totally just change up D&D to be a horror game. But really, the point was to get them out of their comfort zone, try something new. I also did a lot to make them feel comfortable getting into it by saying, hey, it's just the real world in the 1920s. You don't need to know anything about the lore. You don't need to know anything about the mythos. All you need to know is basic 1920s. I'm playing an investigator and I'm going to a spooky mansion investigating something. If I were in your shoes, I would probably suggest to my players, hey, we've been playing D&D for a while. I'm kind of feeling burnt out. I want to try something new just for one game. Let's try something different. Double check with your players that they're actually interested in the setting as well. The worst thing that you can do is invite players to a game that they are not interested at all. If someone says, no, I only do high fantasy, you can't really convince them otherwise. They've set their foot in the ground. They are not moving. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Similarly, you cannot take a player and make them play a game that they don't want to be playing. If there's anything in this video that you think doesn't relate to you and your players, just write a comment down below with what your situation is, and I'll try and do a little Dr. Awkward GM Corbining it in a future FAQ video. So I got my players to try one shot. It was fine. I created pre-generated -gen characters with them, asking them what types of characters they wanted to play. And that really got them on board for trying it out. Then I suggested, hey, let's play Demon the Descent. And then the satanic panic happened and all the players were like, no, we're going to lose our souls. <laughs> so then I said, okay, you won't play Demon the Descent. Okay, we'll play a game where we're mortals going up against demons from Demon the Descent, and you tell me what you think. It was very low stakes for them to try out Chronicles of Darkness, because if it failed, we could just go back to Dungeons and Dragons. But if not, if it succeeded, I could say, hey, you know that demon character that you were going up against? You can play as that type of creature in Demon the Descent, and then we can start our campaign. I put my first step forward with Demon the Descent, they played it for three hours, and at the end of it, they were like, we can play that evil character that we went up against? And I said, yes. And we were already starting to build our characters for Demon the Descent. It was a great way of easing my players into a new role-playing game. So to recap, I did a one-shot with my players that sort of eased them into other RPGs, and then I did another one-shot that was sort of like a pilot episode, if you will, to try and sell them on my next campaign in a different system. But what is the secret technique that is guaranteed to get your players to be confident in trying a new RPG? Well, that secret is quick reference sheets. Specifically, quick reference sheets that tell your players what actions are useful when. This is my quick reference doc for Story Path Ultra, which is used by Curseborn. And this is just a basic skill roll that I want my players to remember how to do. So it just has the basics here. It's quite simple. It's less than a page, and it can even fit on a PowerPoint slide. Sadly, I cannot share the full document with all y'all, but that's just because this is part of a full rule set. And if you want to check it out, there's actually a free PDF in uh, DriveThruRPG for the Story Path Ultra brochure, where you can actually make this quick reference sheet from those rules yourself. Here is a quick reference sheet I used when I tried out the Curseborn Ash Can by Onyx Path Publishing. I make these for every one of my games, even games where the players have already made their characters, and I'm just trying to help them remember their abilities. These are essentially cheat sheets that tell you what your ability is useful and for what part of gameplay it's for. So if it's a general ability that can be used by anything, I put it under the general header. If it's for combat, it has the combat header. If it's for social, it's for the social header. And if it's for investigation, I put it under the investigation header. Anything that's special, 
such as being able to turn invisible or retreat to a safe place such as these, I put that in the special category. Now this makes it a lot easier for the players to use their characters. Having these quick reference documents really lower the bar of entry to trying out new role playing games, as well as act as really good reference material for future tries at the game, especially if you have new players or if you've forgotten the rules yourself. If this video helped you, please click the like button below. Also, I have a Patreon, which if you subscribe now at like $1 a month, you get access to my Mage the Awakening actual play early with my new set of players who I've also given quick reference sheets to to help them out. Editor Corbin here. I actually did make a video talking about how to make quick reference sheets here, so please check it out. Shout out to our patrons for supporting the channel.